to be competitive on these large lump sum construction projects, I've always maintained that you need to be low cost versus low price. So what's that difference? If you're low price, you're doing the same work as your competitors, you just bid it cheaper, which could cause you problems down the road. If you're low cost, you figure out a better mousetrap, usually through some type of innovation. And one of the innovations we did on a new New York bridge project to lower our costs was the modularization of the steel superstructure. Tappan Zee Constructors was challenged with building the largest bridge in the state of New York's history at one of the widest crossings on the Hudson River. And to build this bridge in an area where there's very little land for laydown or staging required a different strategy. We decided early on to build as much of this bridge as possible off-site. By building off-site, we hope to reduce schedule, improve our costs, and more importantly, take as much work off the water as possible, which allowed us to control our safety environment. The key to this strategy was the left coast lifter. Having this asset allowed Tappan Zee constructors to plan for much larger and heavy lifts than any of our competitors. Then the question was, where do we put together these steel assemblies that could be up to 400 feet long and 900 tons? And the answer was the port acquaintance. So to repair the port, for the special needs of our project, we worked with the port's owners to install a number of temporary facilities, including new slips for the very large transportation barges and a hydraulic winch and rail cart system to move these girder assemblies throughout the port and onto these barges. The most innovative part of this process is the actual process itself. We had to build a production line that was capable of handling the final length and weight of these massive assemblies. 12 foot tall, 60 to 120 foot girders are shipped to the port by either truck or barge. They're then mounted on these rail carts that have special hydraulics that adjust these girders to the correct super elevation and curvature, essentially putting them in the same position as they'll be on top of the pier caps on the new bridge over 100 miles away. They're then built into assemblies using high strength bolts. These girder assemblies contain either two or three rows of girders, what we call doubles or triples. So essentially what we're doing is we're building hundreds of quote little bridges, each about the size of a football field. So as these assemblies move through our production line, the various crews perform their tasks, which include installing the bolts, inspecting the bolts, the utility subcontractor is attaching his electrical and mechanical utilities to the girders themselves, and the final crew is doing touch-up painting prior to loadout. The assemblies are then moved out to the wharfs above the transportation barges. The crews use massive pumps to pump bill water out of the barges. So the barges rise and lift the assembly off the wharf. Assembled girders are then transported down the river 100 miles, a 12-hour journey pushed by tugboats to the final location of the new bridge, where the left coast lifter sets these at a rate of two to three girders per week. So these assemblies will connect the support columns and provide the framework for the future precast bridge deck. So building these assemblies on land both improved our safety, our quality, and our cost. The production rates using this process versus stick building this structure over water were better by a factor of three. That's not 30%, that's a factor of three. So although the port is over 100 miles from our new bridge, it plays a key piece of the puzzle in creating the largest bridge in the state of New York.